I'd like to talk a little bit about the difference between a macroscopic and a microscopic uh, thermodynamic analysis. I'm going to start out on the macroscopic side, uh, which is what we're all familiar with, uh, dealing with um, you know, uh, everyday systems like uh, a bicycle pump or a car engine, a jet engine, things that are on a large scale. These are macroscopic systems. And then slowly work my way down to the small scale, so the atomic level or the molecular level, and then relate the two. I'll zoom back out. So typically in this course, we'll be given uh, a system uh, which is similar to what I've drawn in this schematic here. Uh, it could be, say, a tank of water. In this particular example, I've drawn some liquid water uh, with an interface and then uh, water vapor uh, coexisting with the liquid uh, above. And uh, around this tank, I've drawn a control surface and drawn uh, some representative energetic interactions. So uh, if you've looked at uh, some of the previous uh, videos, you should recognize that this is a control mass. There's no mass transfer into or out of this system. But there are energetic interactions in the form of heat and work. So ultimately, with problems like this throughout this course, you'll learn how to identify the system, uh, identify, say, its initial thermodynamic state, uh, identify and quantify these energetic interactions, and then uh, find something out about its end state. Or if information about initial state uh, and the final state uh, was given, maybe calculate uh, the heat transfer or the work transfer involved in taking uh, the system from one equilibrium thermodynamic state uh, to another. But um, sometimes, uh, and, and actually not in this course, but in other courses, we may be interested in more detailed information about this system other than uh, bulk properties like uh, the total energy of the system or the pressure or temperature or volume of the system, things that we could readily uh, measure with uh, macroscopic devices. We may be interested in something uh, like I've drawn over here. So if we zoom in to the interface uh, between the liquid and the vapor, we may want to know something about the dynamic equilibrium process uh, between the condensed phase molecules and the vapor phase molecules. Uh, so at this surface, um, and because uh, there exists equilibrium between vapor and the, the liquid, uh, there's going to be um, different processes that occur that are equal uh, to each other. And in equilibrium here, we essentially assume that the mass of vapor and the mass of the liquid stay constant over time. Now, because these molecules have energy at the uh, microscopic level, uh, we know that they're in constant motion. So there may be some uh, molecules within the liquid that have enough energy to escape uh, the forces acting on them at the surface, and then they can essentially evaporate or, or change phase from the condensed phase to the vapor phase. Uh, there could be some molecules uh, in the vapor phase that don't have enough energy to simply collide with this liquid surface and bounce off, but they may be captured uh, by the liquid surface and condense in. And if we want to know something about uh, this microscopic rate process or, or other types of rate processes on this uh, level, not just the fact that they're equivalent to each other, but maybe quantify those rates, then we need to know something about uh, the molecules themselves, how they store energy, and uh, maybe what's the distribution of molecular energy over our entire thermodynamic system. And in order to do so, uh, we need to turn to um, other courses, okay, uh, and uh, that cover topics that aren't quite covered in this course. And I've listed a few of those courses here. This is not an extensive list. Um, physical chemistry, uh, statistical thermodynamics, uh, the kinetic theory of gases, uh, and even quantum mechanics. And so from these courses, we can find out detailed information about uh, molecular structure, uh, the accessible energy levels, uh, energy storage modes, uh, and things of that sort, um, such that we can perform a detailed analysis and find out more detailed information about our thermodynamic system. So if I zoom in even further from this interface here, I've shown a single uh, water molecule, so one oxygen, uh, two hydrogen uh, atoms bonded to each other. Um, I've drawn some representative uh, Cartesian uh, orthogonal axes through the center of mass of the system. And so if we consider this uh, molecule as our system instead of this entire bulk picture here, what we have is um, uh, essentially we could apply Newtonian mechanics in some extent to it. And uh, we can imagine that uh, this molecule has moments of inertia about each of these axes. Uh, so there is rotational energy 
that this molecule can possess if it's rotating about any three of these axes. So there's an energy of rotation, molecular uh, rotation. Uh, also, the molecule may be sim simply moving through space um, uh, with a given vector. So it's got, it possesses mass, and if it has um, uh, speed or velocity, and then the product of the mass and the velocity is its momentum, or p, vector here. So there's translational energy as well. Um, each of these atoms has a particular electronic configuration, and the electrons themselves uh, possess energy, and they interact uh, with other electrons and the other atoms, uh, and so there's potential uh, energy as well. And so there's an electronic energy, uh, and there's nuclear energy uh, as well. And um, there's a very complex interaction between each of these energy storage modes for each molecule in this entire system. Now, what I've drawn here is that, to say we have one mole uh, of water in this particular example, that's 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the 23rd power molecule. So, and each molecule uh, has a different, different distribution of these energy storage modes, and they're all interacting with each other. So this makes for uh, quite a complex system if we were to go down to this microscopic or molecular level, uh, examine uh, the energy, and then somehow use that information to zoom out and determine the bulk properties that we're ultimately interested in uh, to determine the uh, macroscopic classical thermodynamic equilibrium of our system. So if theoretically we knew something about the distribution of these molecular energies uh, over each molecule and over all of the molecules uh, in our thermodynamic system, we could mathematically operate on that distribution and then arrive at our bulk properties. And courses like uh, statistical thermodynamics uh, allow us to do that using information from both quantum mechanics and physical chemistry. Uh, but I'd like to emphasize, though, that throughout this course, uh, these large-scale bulk properties like uh, internal energy uh, which uh, is nothing more than a measure of the total uh, molecular uh, energy of the system, um, pressure and temperature. Now these properties, if you wanted uh, kind of a physical intuition for them, uh, you could turn to uh, an analysis from a kinetic theory if we were dealing with a gas, so kinetic theory of gas. There's also uh, a kinetic theory of liquids as well. I believe it's a bit more complex. Uh, but for gases, you can imagine pressure is nothing more than um, microscopic momentum transfer. Okay, per unit area. So a, a force from Newton's second law is nothing more than uh, a change in, in linear momentum. So in kinetic theory, we could neglect the detailed molecular structure, assume that this is uh, a point mass, and we still have, say, 10 to the 23rd point masses colliding around, um, but these point masses each carry uh, some momentum. And as their momentum uh, is, is changed, as say they collide with each other or the walls, uh, that translates into a force and if uh, that force is normalized uh, by uh, uh, some kind of area, then you come up with a pressure. Uh, temperature from the same uh, kinetic theory subject is also um, quantified as nothing more than uh, the kinetic energy, or the average kinetic energy uh, of the molecules within our system. Uh, and then volume is another bulk property that we'd be interest in, interested in, uh, more specifically uh, an intensive property, uh, which I'll describe uh, the difference between intensive and extensive properties in another video. Um, but uh, volume per unit mass gives us what's called uh, specific volume uh, of the system, the total thermodynamic system, and the inverse of this property is the density. Uh, so to recap, classical thermodynamics uh, deals with macroscopic uh, properties and macroscopic analyses, uh, whereas these other subjects deal with a microscopic uh, analysis of it can be the same uh, thermodynamic system. And there are tools to bring us uh, from the microscopic approach uh, back to the macroscopic approach. Uh, this is uh, a bit simpler, and uh, we can do back of the envelope calculations using classical thermodynamics uh, for macroscopic uh, systems and get very good results. Um, but uh, if desired or necessary, we can uh, zoom in all the way down to the molecular level, uh, get more detailed properties, and zoom out uh, if necessary. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.